PXG has done it again with the launch of a new lineup of drivers, fairways, hybrids, and irons. The new Gen 5 golf clubs deliver significantly increased MOI, faster ball speeds, longer distances, and tighter dispersions, all coupled with the exceptional feel and sound golfers have come to expect from PXG. Schedule your custom fitting or buy online at pxg.com. And we're back, Stripe Show podcast, on a Tuesday. I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. Time to turn the page ahead. Lots of professional golf coming up. Live Golf kicks off their schedule at the Mayakoba, or down at Mayakoba, I should say. And uh, the PGA Tour comes over here to my state, in the state of Florida. And I got to say, I'm a find myself a little emotional here about the Honda Classic. I've lived in Florida for 21 years. I've been down to the Honda Classic many times. I've got a lot of good memories down there. Love that area, West Palm Beach. And this is the last time you can see that logo behind me in the simulator that uh, the Honda Classic is going to be paid or is going to be played. Now, we're going to have to wait and see if another sponsor picks it up and what happens but the Honda Classic has been the longest running event on the PGA Tour. That's how long they've been there. And this is the last season. And, uh, well, the field's not great because this tournament is sandwiched in between these elevated events. We just went back to back on the West Coast. And then after this week, they go two more elevated events. And it'll be Arnold Palmer Invitational, and then they'll be in my backyard for the players. So we've got an opportunity here this week to make some money. All of these locks and favorites, John Rahm, thank God he's not in the field. Jesus. Guys winning everything. Scotty Scheffler, take a week off. And uh, let someone else win. So we got to bring in the heavy hitters to break this down because we can make some money this week. A long shot, I think, is around the corner. Joining me. Ben Coley, how you doing, sir? Hi, Travis. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Like you, I'm uh, I'm fine with the best players not playing. I, I kind of mix yeah. feelings on these elevated events. I, there's an element of, well, it's obviously very forced, isn't it? Um, you know, we would have had a good field anyway in Phoenix. We would have had a very good field anyway at Riviera. But um, mm -hmm. I don't like the idea that certain players don't really want to be there, but they feel like they've got to be there, you know. Um, and, and to some extent, that's always true uh, somewhere for someone. But um, anyway, I am very happy that we've got Sung J M and Shane Lowry at the top of the betting for this week because, uh, yeah, one of them might win, but we, we definitely feel like we've got a better chance of getting them beaten than we than we did John Rahm last week, right? And and he was about the same price that Sung JM is here. And I know mm. which one I'd rather be taking on. <laughs> yeah, it, you're going to have to um, take a step back and and really understand that. Okay, it's okay that Aaron Wise is 25 to one this week. Denny McCarthy, who's never won, is 25 to one this week. Um, so it's just going to be some different numbers that are going to hit you a little bit. Ah, no, I can't. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, maybe I can. You know, in this particular field. Yeah, the elevated events, um, you know, I've enjoyed the last two weeks for sure. Uh, I love watching the best players play. I find myself missing DJ. I find myself missing Cam Smith um, and and wishing those guys were mixing it up in there with Rom and Scheffler and those guys. I mean, because you know they would be, especially with Cam, the way that, that he played last year. Um, but this is the reality that we live in. Those guys are going to be playing down in Mayakoba this week on their teams. And I got to ask you, Ben, because on your Twitter, you said on your Twitter profile, you said that you're usually watching. What is it? You're you're watching goats, right? <laughs> on your Twitter profile. I actually listen to the mountain goats, right? The mountain goats. You're it's listening. Not, it's not strictly true, but I certainly listen to them more than anything else. So does that in, does that include Bubba's range goats? No, as far as I'm concerned, there are two goats in this world. One of them's <laughs> Tiger Woods, and one of them's the mountain goats. The rest, I'm not interested in. Um, <laughs> Um, we have similar feelings on kind of what's happening, uh, from that standpoint, but, um, yeah, I find myself missing those guys, but you know, the elevated events, these guys are there. Yeah. I think you make some good points like waste management. I don't think Rory really wanted to be there. I think he was kind of going through the motions and you kind of get the sense maybe from a few others. They're taking this week off the Honda classic. You can't blame them, you know, really for wanting out. Um, the field has been deteriorating. It's been an event that has been a staple. I've watched it many times, a very difficult golf course. 
And a lot of guys just elect to, to take it off. Now, ironically, a lot of them live down there in the Jupiter area. Um, but I, I hope in the future that the tour with these elevated events do rotate them around a little bit because there is no reason why this can't be in an elevated event next year or the following year. Maybe it's every three years. I do hope they rotate them around because I would hate to see this particular venue and this particular tournament um, go away. So, you know, it is what it is this year with the elevated events. Uh, I did enjoy the last two weeks. Uh, the next two weeks, you're going to see the best field ever. I promise you that at Arnold Palmer. And of course, it'll be a great field as it always is the players. But um, there's no reason why this venue can't be in an elevated event, right? Maybe next year or the following? Yeah, 100%. I'd, I'd be an advocate of that. I think, obviously, there are loads of factors at play. And I guess for the PGA Tour, it's about um, pleasing the players on the one hand and, and, and taking on board what they want, but also uh, the sponsors and long-running sponsors like Honda are fundamental to to the success of the PGA Tour. And um, hopefully, whether it's Honda or someone else, you know, um, and I, w I would like them to be spread out as much as possible as well. I think ideally I wouldn't have them back to back. And I, I know that the, there yeah. is logic to that because it means, you know, all the best players in the world will play Bay Hill and the players and they were going to play Scottsdale and Riviera. But that meant that none of them were going to play here. Um, except Sanjay who just wants to play. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, I, I hope they can rotate them. I hope they share the love. I hope we see players, um, you know, forced to go to places they've not been to before. I mean, we're going to see that at the Heritage, which I think is the most fascinating of the of the elevated events purely on the basis that absolutely none of them want to be there. Like right. there's no way any of them want to be there four days after the Masters. The only world-class players who play the Heritage are the ones like Jordan Spieth, who mm -hmm. likes that kind of golf course, and Dustin Johnson, because he was sponsored by RBC and, and the rest of the RBC guys. But with the greatest of respect, nobody really wants to be there unless they want to go and chill out with the family. But you start putting 20 million purses next to it, then that relaxation element is hard to hard to stick to, isn't it? So um, that might be the one elevated event this year where we might be able to take on the likes of John Rahm and Rory McIlroy and get a really big price winner because they're not going to want to be there and they're not going to have a great time around the course either. Um, but yeah, hopefully they move around. Now, the one thing that I, I, I will say about these elevated events, if you move them around, is to watch. And the interesting dynamic that the tour has here is you can take the world-class players to venues that they would normally wouldn't play. And that's one of them. It's going to be fascinating to watch them play that golf course because a lot of them, it's not going to suit their game. And it may, that particular course may neutralize some of the length of some of the bigger hitters. I think it would be fascinating to watch the best players play this golf course this week. I mean, yeah, this, and we, we got it. We got it with the heritage in 2020, didn't we? When it, I think yeah, it was we did. The second, yeah. the second event yeah. back after the, um, uh, after the pandemic shut down yep. and, and it was great because they it were was. they kind of felt they had to go there and as you say that's that's nice because and and i guess this came up a lot in conversations about the 10th hole at riviera last week whatever the fairness and the rights and the wrongs of it one of the things as fans of golf that i think most of us like is for these guys to be taken out of their comfort zone and there are loads of ways you can do that you can do it with yep. a, a gimmicky hole you can do it with a brilliant hole um you can do it with firm turf you, but you can also do it with simply the type of golf course and uh, yeah so in that respect again it's a it's a it's a weapon that pga tour has they do have a contrary to what some believe they do have quite a good variety of golf courses don't get me wrong they there could be greater variety um but hopefully they put that to use and we we do see these players go to events they wouldn't usually play well, speaking of variety, you're coming from the West Coast now to Florida. And the one thing you're not going to see here in Florida uh, is you're not going to probably see those 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 under win golf tournaments, especially starting this week uh, at this PGA National Champion course. Seb Strack, of course, won it last year at 10 under. Matt Jones won it at 12 under. Sungjae won it in 2020 at 6 under. <laughs> Keith Mitchell nine jt8 i mean this, this, these are the kind of numbers that you're going to get at this particular venue and of course next week uh up at bay hill that place can play extremely tough um sawgrass depending upon the wind uh sometimes they you know they'll they'll lean in a little bit to the players and not set it up as tough as tpc sawgrass can play and then we know copperhead is is a difficult task at the valspar so you know the, you better buckle up here a little bit when you get to florida and in particularly this venue, as we get into it, it's not long, 7,100 yards, par 70, 
uh, but you got 15 holes of water. I've played it a couple times. When you play this course, you better make some birdies going out, you know, on the, on, on the front nine, um, you know, one, three, four, even two, you can make a birdie. Um, six is brutal. Hardest hole in the course, par four, but you can get some birdies on eight and nine. But then when you turn the corner, I mean, 10 and 11 are just headbangers, tough, tough, uh, par fours. And then of course, 14, the two par threes, 15, and 17, you stand on that tee, they're just very intimidating with no wind. And then you add the wind to um, that you're usually going to get down there. And uh, they're two of the, the more difficult holes on the golf course. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a true test. You wouldn't want to play this course every single week or this type of course um, because you probably would get to the point where you never want to play golf again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's one it's one of those courses with all the water you can make double and really not even hit a bad shot. I mean, the wind can hit it and move it into uh, one of these hazards. So let's get into it. You mentioned M is the favorite. He'll play every week. PJ Tour can count on him. He's at 10 to 1. Lowry, 16. As we come on, McCarthy, 25. Horschel trying to find some form as he gets back to his home state, 25. Norrin, I, I, I'm seeing, is getting a lot of respect. And I would think Aaron Wise um, is going to get some respect at 25. I, I made a bet, got it, got it at better odds than 25. I'm going to go ahead and say McCarthy's in my short odds. Um, he's played okay here the last uh, two years. He's been knocking on the door, and I think it's time. Um, I think the putter will be the difference this week. We know he's one of the best at it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Danny McCarthy could, could break through this week. I could see it. I mean, he's one of those that I, I think sometimes we we're generally in golf sort of analysis. We're a little bit unkind, more so than we should be to people who haven't yet won. Um, I, I, I think that's broadly true. I think Thomas Dietrich is another fabulous player in this field who's not done it yet. Yeah. Um, but but he probably will. I mean, he's made life tougher for himself by getting a PGA Tour card. You know, he would have had a great chance in India or Malaysia or Thailand. But there he is. Um, even in this weaker PGA Tour event, it's a heck of a lot harder to win than the Indian Open would have been this week. But um, that said, I, I think McCarthy had his best year last year uh, in mm -hmm. 2022. Some of the things he did, you know, popping up and, and showing himself in a major and playing so well at the Wells Fargo when Homer won and all the all the little improvements he seems to have made. And um, I think he's obviously a player who understands what he needs to do to take the next step. Um, and I could see it. The one, the one I like who you've mentioned is, is actually Horschel. I, I think my favorite thing about this tournament, as well as it being... Um, you know, a, a drop in grade it is the fact that of those changing conditions you mentioned. And we mm -hmm. see players here every year who just, they look like they're not playing particularly well and, and all of a sudden they are. Um, and Horsch will be a classic example of that. Now, obviously he has played well in various events on the West Coast because he's a borderline top class player, but he's certainly not as effective there. And Riviera is one of those. And, and, and I come back to this elevated events, the, the new schedule, there are players that have to play courses they don't like. And although everyone eulogizes about Riviera, Billy Horschel's played it four times. He's missed three cuts and he's finished 54th the other time. So he doesn't like it um, or he doesn't play well there, wh whichever way you want to you want to spell it out. He putted abysmally last week as well. Mm -hmm. Again, we can hope that Bermuda helps turn that around. <sighs> There are some negatives I get. I do understand that, but I think he's the clear third best player in this field. Um, and I think he's therefore the best bet um, because he's sort of put in with players who just aren't quite as good and certainly don't win as often. And he's in his home state. And I think if you look at career goals, he's ticked off playing for the USA. Uh, the, the the two that remain have probably become a major champion. But I also think winning in his home state would be a big deal. And, uh, and that guarantees his focus as well, which, again, with some of these players, they, they might just be waning a little bit after a busy fortnight. I've got a couple that haven't shown much form here later on that that I'm going to lean into a little bit. I, I'm catching wind that Horschel's changing some things in the swing. Um, that always makes me a little queasy, especially when you get down, you know, into a place like that. Now, the good news, I think, down this week, it, you know, you're looking at low to mid 80s, uh, and the wind's going to be not bad. I mean, we're looking at five to ten, maybe. A little more at times, but I don't think this is going to be crazy win. Now things can change, um, as you as you know, as you get close here to to coastal golf. I mean, things can can start to pick up quickly, but for the most part, I think they're going to be pretty good conditions. 
as we move down here, um, you know, I certainly could see Aaron Wise, um, which I, I, I think you could make that case just about in any tournament. He, he's one that kind of pops statistically. But I shied away there. I think this is a week to kind of to go a little bit heavier down the board, which I did. Um, but maybe I'm a McCarthy homer. I certainly was touting him last year when I saw some incremental improvement with the iron game. We know that he can putt. You made a good point. He flashed there in a major championship. So maybe the putter's a difference this week, and he gets himself a win, and the chips fall his way. Now, Kuchar, interesting, is playing some very good golf at 28-1. to Minwoo Lee, who I want to ask you about, uh, comes in pretty hot, not necessarily on the PGA Tour, um, but he's playing some good golf. And a guy that really showed well in major championships last year, uh, Chris Kirk, um, you know, kind of your fairways and greens kind of guy, 28 to one Vegas, you know, you get the ball striking at 30. I think Poston's interesting at 30 and Svensson. He's an interesting guy for me. I, I kind of follow him. I like his upside. And, and the one thing I see with Svensson, Ben, is that he can go unconscious with the putter all of a sudden. You know, like you look at him statistically, that dude will go plus nine in a heartbeat, you know, and then he'll fall off and then all of a sudden he'll go plus eight. And so he's kind of an interesting guy from, I'm not going to play him, but he has been showing some signs uh, as of late at 30, Pendriff at 35. And I'll stop at Dietry at 40. I'm with you on Dietry. Um, he's certainly a very impressive rookie to me. I went ahead and played him. I like him here. Um, and uh, he's my second pick on the board. I don't know what happened here. The lights have gone out, as you may have seen. I don't know if I'm supposed to wave my it. arms around, but you can still see <laughs> me, right? Yeah, on the, uh, on Minwoo Lee, I, I think it's very easy that you know we get carried away with players of his kind. But I would say if there are two players um, who I think from the European Tour, now DP World Tour, um, mm -hmm. obviously Minwoo's Australian, um, there are probably two players who have that genuine world number one potential. And I think one of them's him. And I think the other is Nikolai Hoygaard. Um, it'll take time with Nikolai, I think, but we're seeing the gradual improvements now where um, I think he's an absolute superstar in the making. I really do. Um, mm. uh, and I really hope he's on the European Ryder Cup side. Um, as for Lee, if you look at him statistically, he had one glaring weakness because he's got really, one of the things I think people who, who are perhaps new to him will see this, you know, brash young australian with who hits the ball 340 350 yards in a heartbeat yep. his swing is gorgeous watch him around the greens he's absolutely incredible one of the best on the the european tour around the greens he can play any shot and that'll that'll serve him well um this week certainly where everyone's going to miss their fair share of greens the area he needed to improve was his approach play and if you look at him statistically the line is going up and and very very sharply that's why he's playing well every week he almost won in Abu Dhabi, nearly chipped in on the final hole to force a playoff. Uh, you know, he was up there contending with John Rahm in Spain. He's basically contended in every start on the European Tour for six mm -hmm. months now. So um, the the question mark I would have is that, yeah, you're right. He played well in some majors last year, played well at the Masters. I'm sure he'll continue to do so when he gets back to Augusta. But it can be difficult in these week-to-week PGA Tour events and, and in Florida and when you're conceding experience to a lot of guys who've played a lot of golf in Florida obviously this record the, the record of internationals in this event is staggeringly good which which is a small positive but I just kind of think you have to just watch and see how he gets on I don't think it's a course that would naturally appeal to him mm. um, because it's a little bit more positional but, but he's versatile and he can do anything I, I really mean it he can be one of the best players in the world but you know it does take time um, and actually mentioning Nikolai Hoygaard I'm sure he came here last year um, and and snuck in on an invite and struggled and I could see that happening to Min Wu as well even though he's a bit further down his career yeah. path um, but yeah one day one day he'll be winning on the PGA Tour I've no doubt about that. See, this is what I like about some of these tournaments, though, is for my audience, we get to, um, I enjoy this, introducing some of the guys that maybe you don't talk about on a weekly basis, certainly don't on this show. I followed Min Woo Lee. As you said, he's Australian, 24, two DP uh, World Tour wins. He's the 47th ranked player in the world. I mean, that's the, that's the level of play. That's a, that's a, that's a young man that's going to be here in a couple weeks. Uh, at the Players' Championship. That's the caliber of player we're talking with about. To your point, this season, he he's went, let's see, he, he there's five events. It's the last five, he's gotten 12th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 13th on the DP World Tour. So 
big time talent. Uh, I mentioned uh, the major championships last year. He was 21st at the Open, 27th at the U.S. Open, 14th at the Masters. So that's real talent here, folks. I mean, this is this is a guy that I'm I'm excited to watch um, this week. In fact, I might just drive down there and watch him. <laughs> and just follow them absolutely. around absolutely absolutely yeah. you mentioned those those majors I, I think the key thing with all of them is or particularly with it being st andrews they're just golf courses where he can go and thrash that driver mm-hmm. um, and as i said he's not one dimensional at all but i i'd love him at bay hill <laughs> I, I would think that'd yeah. be a great a great test for him i could see him playing well in the players as well um he'll be a, a player you don't want to face in the match play um, and and he'd be one who could play well at Augusta. Absolutely, sky's the limit, and uh, he's not afraid. You know, he's just ready to go and take a chance if it comes his way. I just I just think there's, there are reasons to think his skill set is a bit nullified this week. Kucher won here, I think, back in like 14 years ago or so. It's been a while, but he's Kucher's won on this golf course. If my if my mind is uh, not failing me, and he's I feel like he good won. Golf. Did he? I think he won before they moved it. I don't. But he, you'll have to tell me where course? they used to play it before. Okay. Yeah, they moved it in 2006, and I think he yeah, might have won moved, in 2004 it's been a while, or something, yeah. maybe. But he's playing great again, isn't he? And I, I definitely considered him. Um, he didn't pot well at Riviera last week, and he was still up there throughout. So uh, yeah, he's another likely improver for the switchback East. Pendrith has got some good things going on. His driver concerns me a little bit here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass on him. I've been talking Dietrich, you know, looking at these rookies coming in. You know, obviously Taylor Montgomery has been someone we've been talking about for months as he as he transitioned out, and a big Davis Thompson fan, Georgia kid that I think will find his way out here. And and Dietrich was my third, so I'd be kind of contradicting myself if I didn't put a little money on him this week at uh, at forty to one. Now, as we continue down the board, here's where I get to my first guy that has done nothing this year. And and I'm just shocked. And English kicks us off at 40. But the guy I'm talking about is Cam Davis at 40. I mean, my goodness. I caught up with his coach when I was out there in Palm Springs. And they, they, very optimistic. Things are moving in the right direction. Sat there and watched them hit balls. And and, and he just has been abysmal uh, so far at the start of the calendar year. But that's my boy. I think Cam is has a very high ceiling. We've seen it. He's won before. And he's going to break out of this eventually. As you were mentioning with Billy Horschel, it's going to happen eventually. So why not this week? So I went ahead and sprinkled a little bit on Cam Davis on him uh, actually snapping out of it and starting to play some golf that he uh, that he can do. Yeah, I'll join you in that particular club. Okay. I, I, I feel look, better. I, I think it's sometimes like the way golf's gone this year with Justin Rose winning when he was playing so well. And, you know, what was he, 22 to 1, Max Homer at 20s and Torrey Pines, John Rahm at 7 to 1, Scotty Scheffler 14 to 1, whatever. Um, it can feel like out of form golfers don't win golf tournaments, but they do it all the time. It happens yep. all the time. Um, and I think two things I really liked about Cam Davis this week. One is the price. Like he's the same odds over here anyway. He was 50 to 1 over here. That's bigger than he was at the Amex. Um, now, obviously, he's played mm-hmm. badly since, but the Amex had Rahm, Shoffle, Scheffler, Cantlay, Zalatoris. It was borderline elevated. Mm. Um, and he's a bigger price here. That's despite the fact he's played really well on all three starts at PGA National. Um, I think he was ninth in 2020. He's hit the ball really well the last two times he's played it. But the other thing, I, I thought there was enough. Like He's only played Torrey Pines and Riviera since the Amex. They're, they're places where if you have a bad day, you know it can it can look worse than it is. And if you go back to last Friday, he he ranked third in strokes gained off the tee. He gained strokes with his approaches. He's missing a lot of short putts. Hmm. Um, and, you know, we could talk all day about how predictive that is. Um, I, when someone's missing that many short putts, it does worry me. Same reason Johnny Vegas would worry me. But at least we're changing surface, right? If that was me, I, and again, this is layman's analysis but if that was me I, if i was cam davis i think well at least i can go and try my luck on bermuda and maybe maybe it'll just change my luck a little bit and like if it that. does he's one of the most talented players in the field so let's roll with that he is he is and that's and that's where i'm going tell me about adrian merrick merrick Maronk, yeah Maronk. yeah he's um he was my player to watch in 2022 and i managed to huh? lose money betting on him in a year where he won twice so uh, he's he's <laughs> frustrated me a little bit um He's, he's a very, very popular on the DP World Tour. He's a very uh, nice and seemingly unassuming young man. He's tall. He hits the ball a long way, um, a heck of a long way. He used to have a glaring weakness with his game around the greens. 
as most of these talented young players do. He's, he's worked about solving that. The way he won the Australian Open, you know, um, beating Adam Scott on home mm-hmm. soil, reeling him in and, and powering to win that tournament was brilliant. And he has an enormous future. And I thought he played really well at Riviera last week. So there's loads to like, I think a little bit like Min Woo Lee, you, you're nullifying him a little bit. He probably will hit it in the water once or twice. Um, and I just, I, I, I sometimes feel he lacks a little belief now as an Irish Open and an Australian mm. Open winner last year. Maybe that's changing. Uh, he's a player I love, but I just don't think this is the week. So he's at 45, Gordon 50, Will Gordon that is, Stephen Yeager 50, Lee Hodges kind of snapped out of it last week a little bit um, at 50 to 1. Hodges, I think he missed four straight cuts, didn't he? Going in the... Going in the last week, Robbie Shelton, 50. All right, make a decision here. I'm intrigued by Will Gordon, but I'm also intrigued by Robbie Shelton. Um, I feel like I feel like Shelton will give me... I mean, he's 20th at Pebble, 6th at Amex. I know I'm going to get the iron game, and I think I'll get the short game. So approach and short game, I think I'm going to get with him. His driver makes me a little nervous. But if I had to pick between Gordon and Shelton, which way would you nudge me? Shelton this week, I think. Okay. I think if you think about the, comparing those two as players and you've touched upon it, Shelton is a poor driver. Gordon is a brilliant driver. Mm-hmm. And therefore, at this particular golf course, I'd lean towards the poor driver who can make up for it in other ways. And I think he's a prime candidate for a putting spike. He's putted poorly and finished 20th at Pebble. He didn't putt very well at the Amex and finished sixth. Um Last time he played in the East Coast, he did putt pretty well. I think he finished 10th at the RSM Classic. Um, He's a player I think a lot of us have liked for a long time and have been waiting to break out. He's obviously a four-time Corn Ferry Tour winner, two of those down on the the East Coast. I I like him a lot this week, and he he played well here a couple of years ago. He's a better player now. What's not to like, really? Yep. you know, I, I think of that that collective you've just mentioned. I, I preferred him narrowly to Lee Hodges. I think he's maybe got a little bit more potential. I, I do like Hodges as a player, nice and solid. You could see him playing well. Um, but I like Shelton. Yeah, I, I, I do like him this week, and he's one of my selections. And he went and he went to school to Alabama, folks. So this is it's kind of back here with this Bermuda grass, and I do think that matters down here, Ben, in 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 the South. You know, these guys do get back down here, and I, you could just. I do think there's a, a sense of peace getting back on to those surfaces that um, obviously they've been very successful on. Um, yeah, I'm big on Shelton this week. I, I did. I haven't sprinkled anything on Will yet. Missed cut at Farmers, missed cut at Amex. Has shown some sign other than that. But yeah, I think Shelton is the guy. And, I, and I'll certainly play right now, currently 50 to 1, 50, yeah, 50, 55 to 1. SH Kim. Brantlett's getting some play. Uh, he's. A guy, 13th at the Farmers, 7th at AT&T. Uh, we know Ben On um, loves it here. He was T4 back in 2020. And as we start moving down the board, finally we get to Straka, who is not quite in the same form as he was last year when he won it. He's at 55. As you look at the middle of the board here into the into the 50s and 55, Buckley at 55, Danny Willett, who I kind of like at 55, Ben Griffin has played some good golf at 55, but Zayden Hutt, Hardy, Garrick Higo, anybody you would stop me at or I haven't mentioned kind of in the 50s, 60s, maybe 70s? Yeah, I do like Ben Griffin. Um, like Robbie Shelton, he played quite a bit of golf here as a, as a junior, and I'm always, you know, it's hard to balance that and hard to weigh it rather. Um, but I, I remember I backed Daniel Berger here in the year he lost a playoff to Harrington. Um, and he'd got some fantastic form at the course from his junior days. And he was definitely one of those who just felt a lot more comfortable. That was his rookie season. And all of a sudden he was ready to go and show what he could do. I think Ben Griffin's already shown us what he can do. You know, he could have yep. won in Bermuda, probably should have. He was fourth at the Wyndham. Loads of good form in these similar courses, the Sony, Sanderson Farms, Houston. Generally speaking, Bermuda Greens, he's from North Carolina. I I think he's a definite candidate. And just a word on Willett, I did look at him. I I think if you go down the role of honor here, as well as the really world-class players like Adam Scott and Ricky Fowler and Rory McIlroy and Patrick Harrington and Ernie Els who've won here, when you look at some of the more surprising winners, um, and by that, I mean, Michael Thompson, Russell Henley was a massive price when he won. 
you look at what they've done since or had done before, and, and a load of them have played well in majors. Like Henley led at Torrey Pines. Mackenzie Hughes was up there at Torrey Pines, where he was second here to Sung Jay. Michael Thompson nearly won the US Open at Olympic Club. Lucas Glover nearly won this tournament once. Jeff Ogilvy, I think, was second to Michael Thompson. So although it's very different to a US Open, a lot of the same mental requirements are there. Uh, the same patience, the same yep. uh, willingness to take your medicine, minimize mistakes, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I looked at Webb Simpson, Padraig Harrington, and Danny Willett as the three sort of major credentialed players away from mm -hmm. Shane Lowry. Of the three, it was Willett I came closest to because he played well at Riviera. But I did sort of look at Simpson because if you look at his iron game last time in Phoenix, it was back close to where he would have been at his peak and and he's not been putting well but maybe that'll improve back on bermuda as well so look simpson's been in a real rut but you're getting 66 to 1 in a dreadful field over here so i could see the case what's interesting yeah what's interesting about willett is i feel like i feel like he's kind of on the up and up right now you know i, I kind of wonder all right justin rose wins that lights a little fire you know under him a little bit um, he played very well at the Genesis, you know, his, his driver, I think he finally worked out a little bit. His approach game was good. His short game was good. His, his putting was, was average right in the middle of the field. But keep in mind, he was second at Fortinet, which kind of a similar field, uh, here this week. You go back to the Honda last year where he finished 48th. He hit the ball really good. Uh, his putter was just off and he finished 48th. He, he lost four. So that's maybe he cleans that up this week. He hits it as good. And goes positive too. Dan, Danny Willett will be there, folks. I mean, in this field, he'll be there. I, I can, I think I'm going to play Danny Willett. I, I do. Um, I'm, I'm really big on him. And as you mentioned, his state of mind and what he's been through and winning, obviously, a huge tournament <laughs> and, and what that takes. So I think we're kind of aligned there as we keep going down the board. I'm not going to mention every name here, but Padraig, as you did mention, at 70 to 1. Padraig's golf swing looks better to me now than it did when he was winning major championships. I mean, he, that's he's what, that's what he thinks. Certainly <laughs> it, it does. I agree. I totally agree. I mean, it, it really is. It's, it's really, it's really something to look at. Um, boy, Davis Riley, different player this year than, than we saw, you know, into the spring summer last year, he's trying to find form. Webb Simpson's trying to find form at 90, uh, EVR there's at a hundred Hoffman, a flicker of light at, at at 100. Matt Wallace, 110 as we continue down here. I'll take you down to... Fratelli's interesting to me, but I'm going to go all the way down to Eric Barnes at 150. I thought you were going to say the player I've got on my list who has the same first name, but yeah, we can, we'll start with Eric Barnes. Okay. I, I, I got Eric Cole over here. Okay. So it's, it's okay. all aboard the Eric train this week. So tell, so do you, you have, okay. So tell me about Cole. I think he's won 50 tournaments on the minor league golf tour there in Florida. He lives nearby. Obviously this is a, a totally different uh, kettle of fish, but he's made six of his last seven cuts. He was 15th at Pebble beach. He played in the, those courses for the first time. Didn't putt well. Um, got engaged at Pebble Beach. Some people may have seen that. Um, a nice little feel-good story. But um, look, he's a he's a bit of a journeyman pro, isn't he? But if you look at what he does, he doesn't drive the ball very well, and therefore he's going to struggle at places like Torrey Pines, the only place he has missed a cut this year. Um, but if we can get to a course where you can get away with that a little bit, which this this certainly is, most of that water is in play with the second shot. Um, his approach plays good. He's good around the greens. A good scrambler. Good putter. Um, and he's got a local connection. He finished second a couple of times at this golf course at a much, much lower level. Um, but in this field, with a feel-good factor and, and the, the nice small signs that he's he's comfortable out there, uh, 175 to 1, he's my he's my long shot play for the mm. week. I'm making some notes here on Eric Cole. That's uh sounds simple, doesn't it? But I'm sure it's more complicated uh, in <laughs> you reality. Did. You, did a, you did an excellent <laughs> job of just selling me on that. Um, you know, Barnes, 13th at the Farmers. I kind of, I did some interesting things. I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep this very simple, right? And I don't, let's not, let's not overthink this. EG. I've, I've done okay at this tournament in the past. And like, okay, I need, I need approach. I can't have a dog around the green. I need approach and I need short game. And he kind of checks those boxes for me. And he has this propensity just to go unconscious with the putter too. 
you know, and it's like he goes six and he goes six point seven at farmers. He goes six at the RSM, and you know he's right there. So I'm gonna stretch to um I'm gonna stretch to Kim. I, I can see myself playing Grayson Sig at one thirty too. I kind of like what I've seen from him back in the South Georgia Bulldog. I, I think if we had to stretch, because look, folks, this is this is where some winners have come from. The area that we're talking about right now is where Sep Straka came from last year. I think he was 150 to one. And so Sep, Georgia Bulldog, Grayson Sig, let's keep it going. Georgia Bulldog, 130 to one. Anybody else in that range that you're leaning towards? There were a few. Um, I uh, He's a bit shorter, but I thought Aaron Rye would probably play quite well. Um, Andrew Man. Novak, I thought, you know, he was he was maybe one who you could see see going well you mentioned dylan fratelli i i like the improvement he's shown off the tee i kind of mm -hmm. maybe waiting for him i i backed him last year in texas which obviously is a the state where he went to college and um i think he lives there now and um i, I think maybe the texas open if he keeps driving the ball as he as he has been would be uh would be where we might see him step up um a, a really silly one i've i've backed luke donald here a couple of times the last few oh. years um He's definitely playing better. I mean, he was, he, in contention, he was in contention for the Ned Bank at the back end of last year. He started this year well in Abu Dhabi. He's 150 to one or so. He made the cut of Riviera last week. When he talks about his game, he says it's better than it's been in a long time. And I think he's a fairly good sort of self-assessor. I don't think he embellishes too much. You know, Padre will tell you he's the best player in the world happily with Luke Donald he's a bit more reserved and um and I, I think he is playing better <laughs> so I would definitely keep an eye on him and the other if I knew he was fit and it's a doubt because he hasn't played the last two weeks although from what I read he's had a family issue rather than a health issue but he has had a bad back for a long time now um Chris Stroud is is a player he's he's not mm. good off the tee he has good approach shots he can get hot with the putter he's got a good record here from back in the day um he finished what fifth in the rsm classic that was his penultimate start so it's tangible recent form um he's 500 to one and and as you've said i mean there aren't wow. it, the last few weeks have not been weeks where you can really feel optimistic at that price but actually here you can um or maybe not optimistic but at least hopeful Wow, you went way down the board there. Yeah, I skipped a few names, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I stopped it. No, that's good. That's good. You got me thinking here. I, I stopped at 150. I talked about Barnes. And I'll throw Michael Kim in the mix, too. Um, I, I'll throw Michael Kim in the mix. California guy, I know. Coming over to Florida, but showing form. You know, 44th at Farmers, 11th at AT&T. I think he, he'll give me the iron game. I think his short game is very good. Not a great putter. Not sure you have to be here. Um, and I think he'll keep it in front of him. I think he's a guy that kind of keeps him in front of him off the tee. Iron game, positive nearly five at AT&T. He's, uh, let's see, he was, he was, um, he made a run at the U.S. Open there. I think he was close to a top 10 as well. Yeah, um, back at Merriam, wasn't it? I was just thinking yeah, that, that actually he Marion. played well there. And then when he played the Open the week after the John Deere Classic, he played well. So yeah, he did. Yeah, at a very low level, he has that sprinkling of of major form. I throw in um the two the two Woos as as players that I was sort of interested in. So Brandon Wu. I think the interesting thing about Brandon Wu, obviously he was placed a big price at Pebble Beach. He was runner up there to Justin Rose. He played brilliantly all week. I was on him that week and uh he he was fantastic. Uh, you know, he missed a few putts, but he, he was he was really good. I think he led the field in greens, pounded fairways. He's you know for a, for a young up and comer, he's he's more old fashioned in his style. But if you go back to last year, um, he shot seventy seven sixty six here, and I think that sixty six was a bit of a turning point because he went on to almost win the next week at Puerto Rico. Uh, he obviously went on to play well at Mexico, and if you look at all his best form, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Pebble Beach, the Scottish Open. It's always when there's a bit of breeze. Um, so he was interesting because I could easily just ignore Riviera last week. And if you do that, he hit the ball really well at Phoenix. Again, I don't think that's his course. I could see him playing well. I know he's a bit further up the market, maybe 80 to 100 to 1. But um, if Brandon Wu wins an event at 80 to 1, I think a lot of people would regret having missed that, you know? Wow. Yeah, I think that's a good find there, too. I think a couple of the, the twins are in the, in the field here. Pearson Cootie, who's won a couple of times the Court Ferry Tour. Very talented guy. I talked to his his coach, uh, Josh Greger, for a while about him. I think we're going to see him out here very soon uh, on the PGA Tour. And then his brother, Monday, qualified. 
uh, Parker, right? I think Parker Cody, he's like 800 to one. I, that might be a bit of a stretch. Pearson at 180 right now. Um, big kid, strong. His, his power will be a little more neutralized here on this particular course. But I think two names to, to watch out for. Last name's Cody. The twins, Pearson and Parker. Oklahoma kids um, making their way out here uh, very, very soon. All right. Do you think we'll ever see the, the Cooties and the Hoy Guards on opposing Ryder Cup teams? Could That'd be, be fun, wouldn't it? That'd yeah. Nice. Could be. Yeah, it's fun, right? The next generation um, coming out here. And uh, this is, you know, this is a week. Look, it, you just kind of get the feeling anything can happen, right? I mean, I just I just mentioned the names that have won here. Straka, Jones, um, you know, Sung Jay, obviously, during 2020, that was... Was that his rookie campaign? No, no. That was the year second after his, season. his second yeah. season. Yeah, he didn't win his rookie season, um, but he was rookie of the year. And then Keith Mitchell, who's played well, he's one of the, you know, you got some big names. You got JT, Rory's one here, but then you got names that, you know, that are down in that 150, 200 to odd range. So anything, Ben, can happen here. I think anything can happen on this golf course. You can be strolling along just nicely and all of a sudden hit two balls in the water and you go, two doubles and four holes and just like that your round is is back to even um so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to grind here you know you gotta you're gonna have to grind here because you're gonna make you, you're going to make some mistakes right like you can hit a good shot and it goes in the water can can you grind out a bogey versus a double you're gonna have to save some pars uh, you got to take advantage of the two par fives like there there's things that kind of have to happen here but then also you're, you're gonna have to take a couple punches and kind of hang in there and then and then fight to the end. And, and like that's what we saw with Straka, who fought to the end. It started to rain, and all of a sudden, he's got himself a win at 10 under par. Yeah, 100%. I mean, and, and the flip side of that is I, I like not feeling like my guy is out of it when he starts slowly. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's some tournaments Good you point. just feel like you, you get left behind on day one. I, I remember when, when Sung Jae won here, I think he, he was – 50th maybe after round one he certainly wasn't right up there and we saw i think Mackenzie hughes that same year didn't he shoot a pair of 64s or something very similar to that to go from the cut line to to finishing runner up and that is possible like because it is not a long course um both par fives are reachable you can make you know huge ground um given the right circumstances so um, as long as your guy makes the weekend, it's it's game on and that's that again that's a change because i think last week was a great spectacle for purely golf fans and yeah if you back john rahm great but it it felt like there were two with respect to keith mitchell and, and even cantley i never really felt like there were more than two potential winners of that from about four o'clock on friday afternoon well i think we'll feel like there are at least 10 potential winners right through to sunday afternoon here and that's a nice change yeah well said yeah this is gonna be fun honda classic ben coley go uh, follow him at ben coley golf sportinglife.com. Appreciate your time, man.